Uh, do we have a second for Trustee Garcia Morales's motion? I'll second that, but I also have a statement. All right, we have a second by Trustee Brooks, and she would like to make a statement, and if we can keep those brief if possible. It's been a long year, so I'll try. I obviously know that this is probably a failed motion, but I still support this. Um, when I requested this item, it was an effort to get you to reflect on whether your leadership had been a contributing factor to our collected dissatisfaction. Please let the trustee speak. Instead Please. of doing so, you held a press conference and denied any wrongdoing. I find that troubling since I've personally contacted you multiple times to express my concerns regarding your leadership. Due to your uneven treatment of board members, your failure to include the board liaison in meetings to help you actually move the board forward, your failure to maintain contact with the superintendent, your shifting the blame for items that were not addressed that fell clearly with inside your domain, and your persistent unwillingness to meet with me to discuss how to move forward. I agree that it would have been easier to look the other way and let you ride out these two months knowing your time in this position ends soon. But I wondered, at that time anyways, what kind of message that would send if a majority of us knew of your abuses of power, micromanagement, avoidance of accountability, and excessive controlling of everything except the things that are clearly your responsibility. It takes courage to state the truth in a room full of people willing, unwilling to hear it. I requested this item after giving you an ultimatum. I didn't think my demands were unfair. The first option seemed pretty straightforward. Acknowledge your contributions to this issue and commit to moving this board forward while adhering to board policies and performing your duties properly. This is a very formal way of asking you to do your job. Many people are claiming this is retaliation and I have allowed you to fill in gaps of information that have been detrimental to the truth. I've resist, resisted the urge to go public with this for the exact reason that we're witnessing at this moment. Now I feel some context is required for this conversation, and I have no choice but to provide some insight to the public. You started this off by revising policies that were publicly posted, um, which then led to Trustee Ford filing a false ethics complaint against me. And she has continued to harass me every day since. You started the first month of your presidency by fighting over board offices. This is a task that took previous board presidents approximately five minutes. During the first week of February, you reached out to me and Deanna Wright to ask us how assigning offices worked. We didn't understand the difficulty of assigning three empty offices to three incoming trustees. Turns out you were insisting on moving a staff member so that you could assign an incoming trustee with the smallest possible office available. When you were told no, you insisted that you had the right to remove move staff members who were not under your supervision and then you continued to fight about it. You began your presidency by adding agenda items outside board policy, which clearly stated you needed to request the items in public. I advised you on the proper process after your first attempt. You could have rectified the situation, but in instead you decided to double down. You asked people to flood the board with emails urging support for your item, and when the board suggested tabling it so we could focus on opening schools, you went online and encouraged people to harass us by misrepresenting the facts. You've now done this several times, so claiming you lacked awareness is not a valid excuse. This has led to a board that is consistently distracted by external groups and special interests, while the foundational elements of educating children remains unaddressed. You seem to befriend every negatively charged group you can find. I don't know if it's because you legitimately think you can resolve their issues or not, but so far that hasn't been the case. Community members have reached out to question why you've attended meetings outside of your districts with groups who badger the superintendent and another trustee in a very unprofessional and gross manner. You allowed Trustee Ford to present a slideshow presentation based on a fictional accounting of events that never occurred, neglecting to clue everyone in that you were the one who edited policies outside the board's boundaries. You allowed her to slander Joe Caruso and the superintendent, who have more legal protections than elected officials. During contract negotiations with Superintendent Jara, confidential information was mysteriously 
mysteriously leaked to a blogger. Board members were the only ones with access and motive to do this. When I expressed my concern about this to you, you deflected and spent the entire time talking about a conspiracy you heard about me working with CCEA to remove U.S. President. I told you that makes no sense since the public is not required to weigh in on the fitness of, your, uh, of you being board president. I asked you to research who may have leaked information. To my knowledge, you made no attempt to do so. When approving the superintendent's contract, you and your peers hid behind a bogus excuse in an effort to prevent the board from making progress. It was clear that you had no intention of working with the superintendent in a productive and professional manner. As board meetings resumed in person, you struggled to follow basic protocols to ensure the safety of the board and the public. I recognize the public has been especially rowdy, but your response of blaming the police for your missteps was unacceptable. I appreciate you getting things under control, but you allowed the public to place the blame on school police as though they were solely responsible for containing the public. When I attempted to meet with you to explain this, you avoided me and forced me to express my dissatisfaction in a public meeting instead, afterwards sarcastically thanking me for a presidential tutorial. You do not follow a positive example for social media usage. As a, as a result, some members of the board will never be convinced to be more responsible in their own use of social media. You treat Twitter as if it's the customer service department. You tweet indignation over minor occurrences at the school level, leaving central service staff feeling deflated during a time when they are short-staffed and stressed. You solicit negative feedback to support your own point of view in an effort to overrule the superintendent on operational functions of the district. You make no effort to educate or support decisions or calm people down, which is one of your primary functions as the president. You attempted to have staff revise redistricting maps behind closed doors before the public even viewed existing maps. Regardless of who suggested it, I halted the efforts by explaining to the superintendent how problematic it was for an elected official to do this behind closed doors. You then accused me of interfering in the redistricting process after I demanded transparency. You blamed staff for their perceived lack of coordination, but you also failed to bring an item to the full board to explain how redistricting would occur so we could be prepared to address the predictable challenges. Recently, information from a closed session was leaked. When I asked how you were planning to address it, you said you would take care of it. I am not aware of any actions you undertook to ensure confidentiality moving forward. I have requested numerous agenda items with no movement from you. And as soon as Trustee Ford requests an item, you prioritized it, made sure it was on the very next agenda. The item was a mid-year evaluation for the superintendent, which was being requested in September. You have remained woefully behind on every task that I handed to you. Numerous staff members have confidentially confided. Numerous staff members. I'm have sure. I'm sure that Trustee Brooks is wrapping up very rapidly. I am. Please, please. Numerous staff members confidentially have confided in me that they have interact when they have interacted with you. You have been unwilling to compromise. You circumvent processes and exclude key personnel in an, in, in an effort to work in a silo shrouded in mystery. When you bring items forward, frequently no one knows where they came from. You bring items after the formal agenda review process has been completed outside of board policy. And in the instance of 3.02, you completely restructured the agenda to make sure the item was as much of a circus as humanly possible. You goes on to say you micromanage, but I think I covered that. The last thing is you refuse to take accountability for anything. You claim that you're a victim of retaliation, but the rest of us have actually witnessed some behaviors that are very problematic. This request was a last ditch effort to get you to recognize the harm your leadership is causing and some of the concerns that we have expressed, which have gone completely unaddressed. Your request to remove the superintendent was a convenient distraction, a distraction that occurred after I have requested to meet with you on numerous occasions to address the many issues that I've had with your leadership and your abuse of the superintendent. The most recent request was a demand I made the day before you requested your item. Trustee Brooks, uh, we are running way over oh, time. I'm almost done. 
Okay, please. A similar. Please, please wrap up. A similar please, thing occurred last summer when you requested an item after the superintendent and I asked to meet with you to express our concerns. There is a very clear documented pattern of your unwillingness to discuss our differences and move forward together. And I cannot wait for the treasure trove of the electronic records that prove absolutely every claim I'm making. Okay, um, please, shh, shh, please. Uh, thank you, Trustee Brooks. That was quite lengthy. Um, Sorry, I, didn't, I do not mean that to be funny. I'm just tired like all of you.